Hello, welcome back. So, uh, welcome aboard. Fasten your seat belt. We're going to go through uh, maybe a three minutes or, or more, maybe uh, sharing together uh, your questions. And uh, so, uh, we had a very good, uh, interesting meeting last week. So, I'm pleased to be with you. So, uh, good evening, Ireland. So, it's from Montreal, Canada. So, the uh, we're going to have uh, a great evening. And we had many questions received also during the weekend last week that we couldn't, we didn't have time to answer properly. So uh, we had one question from uh, Yuna. Uh, and uh, so uh, she's asking, does perfectionism interfere with losing weight? What do you think? <laughs> you bet. In many different ways. Uh, so maybe perfectionism, for example, uh, I must lose weight. Well, that's a high demand on yourself, uh, an obligation uh, to lose weight. So I, I would stop right away. I said, no, you don't have to lose weight. It's a choice. You can choose to gain weight. You can choose to stay the same or lose weight. So it's very important to say, I choose to eat more properly, to change my habits, my behavior, and, and follow a diet program to lose my weight. So it's very important because if you put too much pressure, say, I have to stop smoking. How many times those who have said so didn't do it for, um, so maybe one, two, three times, and it was, oh yeah, I have to, I have, it doesn't work. So choose to do so. I want to lose weight, when do I start? So that, that, that's an example for our perfectionitis. Uh, but perfectionism, I define perfectionism as perfectionitis. This is an inflammation uh, of uh, what you want to achieve. So there's a big difference between perfection and ambition. So you're ambitious, you want to be a better person, physically, psychologically, uh, you want to feel better about yourself. So that's great. So I think that's our purpose on her, that that's our personal journey to be a better person maybe every day, if we can achieve so, and we're working at it. So, but when it's a demand, it's, you have to, you, you must lose weight, you must stop drinking, you must stop smoking it won't work uh, and it won't stay for long if you start something. Uh, we don't like to be forced to do something. It, it needs to be a choice. So the same thing, what, what I do see often uh, consulting with my patients, um, I must see the scale go down every week. I take care, I eat properly, I follow my food program and uh, the scale has to go down every week. Well, unfortunately, no. Because unfortunately, the scale doesn't measure only the fat loss. It measures all kind of things. It measures uh, your muscle. If you're training, you've started a, a gym program or exercising, you're building up muscles. It weighs, you're going to weigh more. So even if the scale doesn't go down, does it mean that you're not losing fat? But if you have not thought about it, so you may say, gee, I can't lose weight anymore. Even if I exercise, the scale doesn't go down. So it is very important So to not expect to uh, uh, every week to lose weight. Ex expect every week to, to follow properly you, your food program, your exercise program, uh, be happy with yourself. And sooner or later, the, the scale will show you that you're using weight. If you overeat, it's okay. You have overeaten and you gain weight. Well, that's, that's responsibility. You have overdone it you have the consequences. Don't feel guilty about it. You have the right to cheat. That's another thing in perfectionism. Uh, I shall never slip. No, that's not true. It's impossible. One day or the other, I don't see any, I've not met any human being uh, that has not slipped once or twice or more even 20 times. But if you learn every time, just the, a small part of it and say, what can I learn from, why did I slip? So do I have to learn something on my behavior, on my involvement in changing and so forth? So if every time you even improve by 5%, when you're gonna have done 20 slips, there's gonna be 1% improvement. 
Uh, so th that's very important. So perfectionism is uh, is a major fault, incidentally. Be ambitious, try to be a better person every day, but try to stay away from perfectionism. Um, the same thing, because perfectionism, so you see, um, I must succeed at work, uh, I must please my boss, and so forth. So hopefully, ideally, okay, if you achieve so great, but if you expect too much, because to please another person, it is the person's own decision to, to be pleased with you or not. So you, you can't put any pressure on that. So it's very individual. So, and this will bring up a lot of uh, stress. And, and when you're stressed, and when most people are stressed, uh, will come up anxiety. And, and then when we don't feel good emotionally, so we have all adopted some techniques. Some will smoke more, some will drink more, uh, some will eat more, and some will do the three, <laughs> three behaviors for the same type of uh, deception, frustration of not achieving at work or uh, in your uh, uh, life with your, uh, uh, with your spouse and so forth, so with your children. So, we do need all of us in our very performing society to lower our expectancies. Yes, be ambitious, but every time you have a deviation, it's tough or in motion. So ask yourself, what do I learn from it? Is there something I, I can do better uh, from that experience? And I think we said the last time, so those who go in the detoxifying center for alcohol, drugs, addictions, and so forth. So the first time they go, the success rate for long term uh, is almost zero, between zero and five percent, not more. Uh, so, But we all do know people who have been drinking, who are alcoholic, and so forth, who stop after probably two, three, four, five attempts. Same thing for smoking. So many, maybe many of you have stopped smoking after how many attempts so don't if you deviate it's, it's great because deviations are marvelous opportunities in order to improve so what do i learn from it so it's so every time five percent improvement you're on the way to to success great so uh thank you you know to uh, the uh, opportunity you give me to uh, answer that um but the same thing patricia was asking how do you get motivated after you have a slip uh well, I think the, the, the answer is what just said. What do I learn from my mistake? Um, how did you learn to walk? You never fell? Probably we all fell. Uh, how did you learn to bike? Same thing. So we, we probably by falling because everything's like, mm, okay, there's something I have to adjust and do it better. So uh, slipping, uh, failures, they're not really failures. Uh, the obstacles maybe, me going the right direction. If I learn every time just 5%, 2%, ultimately I'll be able to achieve what I want to do. So be responsible, but not guilty. There's a major difference between responsibility and guilt. So the, if you do something, you overeat, you, you over smoke, drink, well, you end up with consequences. So uh, you may be alcoholic, you, you may have uh, bronchitis, chronic bronchitis, you may have cancer, you may have, uh, you may be overweight. Uh, so take your responsibility. Okay, uh, I didn't believe correctly, but you don't have to feel guilty. Guilt is an emotion because you say, oh, I should have been able to resist. I should have been able to keep up losing. I should be able. So, so no, you shouldn't be able because ideally we all should be good looking, healthy, uh, be able to manage everything in our life. But we're human beings. So uh, give yourself the right to deviate, the, the self to fail sometimes, but you're going to learn. It's not a complete failure. It, it's an opportunity. Every time it's an opportunity to be a better person along the way. So uh, learn from every mistakes and ask you, so what do I learn? What does it tell of me, of my behavior, of my thoughts? And you're going to keep up improving. So that keep up, that, that, that's the only thing. Don't be perfect, but keep up one day at a time and learn small percentage at a time. And you're going to end up uh, succeeding, that's for sure.
So that that's interesting. So we have got Mary. Uh, she, she says uh, I'm a uh, consultant in the motivation, which I adore. So great. Uh, it's incredible to see how the plan has changed so many lives. So grateful to be part of it, Kelly. Uh, that that's a uh, interesting. I'm a very lucky man. I have to say to you that almost every day I say people that it changed their lives. And sometimes we say just a few words, uh, but they give the person, if they're ready to it, they're going to take it and make some profound long-term changes in their life. And so my job sometimes, and probably the same, uh, Kelly Mary, uh, for you is to uh, uh, we work on the thoughts of people, what goes in their mind, what are they telling themselves in their mind? And we, we have to be some, somewhere, we try to be a kind of a magician of the thoughts. So what are the thoughts people have regarding their weight loss, uh, regarding the way to feel better with themselves and not put as much pressure, not try to be perfectionistic and never fail, no. Uh, so uh, just to change a little bit of those thoughts, it can make sometimes miracles. So uh, I'm very privileged to, to hear those testimonies and I do see uh, Kelly, that uh, you have that same kind of reaction. So, uh, and that's great. So, I think that's our goal also to be able to make maybe just a little difference in other people's lives. So, it gives a meaning to my own life. So, Mary, thank you very much for your uh, comments. Patrick, was, do you think people don't realize that weight loss requires a financial commitment? Do you think you have uh, talked about this in your books? Absolutely. Um, there is, it's a, thank you very much, Patrick, to, uh, to talk about the financial commitment. Um, all the surveys and research I've done over the years, uh, I would say in the last close to 40 years in, in that field of uh, financial commitment, um, most people, really most people will save uh, probably between 50 and 100 uh, uh, euros per month. Uh, just by eating less. Whatever program you do, you may take some protein supplements or not, you may pay uh, a fair uh, a fee for, for uh, the program and so forth. But even if you had all this, just by what you're going to save by eating much less. And this, we, we did it scientifically. We, we measured how many calories people were eating on average every day. The mental weight report, and if you've done it, Craig, uh, Patrick, you, you're going to maybe see the, how many calories on average you, you take a day. Uh, and this, if you try just to see how much it costs for uh, 2,500, 30,000 calories per day, and, and you subtract the amount you're going to invest in yourself, in your health, in feeling good about yourself, in investment in yourself, uh, you're going to be very, very surprised, you're going to save many, many, many euros per month. Because it, it, just saving, for example, one uh, one restaurant a week, uh, how much do you spend? Uh, just the type of food, the food it takes. Uh, so it, I'm very happy, thank you for, for asking, because I think it's important. Many people have uh, objections, uh, excuses, well, it costs too much. No, it costs too much to be overweight. Uh, or obese, it costs you on money because it costs you more to, to be overweight, uh, in clothing, in health, in, in self-satisfaction, the cost is enormous because also those costs of psychological values related to it. Uh, so it's, I, I think you're going to save a lot of money and a lot of you're going to keep up a lot of uh, self-respect and uh, self-love. So uh, the uh, no, you, you're going to save money financially too. So great, thank you for asking. So the uh, so we had also other uh, the, the topic also today was, was interesting. The uh, how to lose weight and how to maintain it maybe for life. Uh, that was said in one sentence. I would say, say how to lose weight and keep keep it off uh, for life. Uh, how to lose weight is um, 
because this has been recurrent uh, questions about uh, what's the best diet and which diet will, will help me maintain the weight. So there are two treatments. The first one is to lose the weight. Uh, and there's another one, which will be, well, I'll keep up my weight up and so forth. But that's another treatment. A diet won't make it that you're going to uh, be able to keep it up for all your life. No. Uh, so the, the first one, how to, which is the best diet, how to lose weight? Uh, the first, my, my first answer is choose a diet that will suit you. You feel comfortable with your choice. Be responsible. It's your choice. If you don't like that choice, change next week, next month, anytime. You can change. This is a tool. It's a nutritional tool. So you can change. Uh, and I think motivation weight management it gives you the opportunity of different diets. So start with one, doesn't want to change. Uh, studies that we did that published in the British Journal of Health Psychology uh, about the predictive factors of, of weight success. Uh, we found four predictive factors. The first one is the rapid, quick weight loss. The second one is a protein diet. Uh, and the third one is it's quick changes of your habits, and the last one is a regular follow-up, something like on a weekly basis. Uh, and, and this we have seen over a thousand patients, a follow-up of nine months. So you, you see a weight loss, which is very, very spectacular and very interesting. The weight loss average is probably two to three pounds, depending on people, a week. So the, uh, but the opposite. So sometimes nutritionists will say, well, no, don't use, don't lose quickly because you're going to regain it quickly. That's false. That's not true. Uh, but if you lose it slowly, if you don't take a protein diet, a more conventional type of diet, if you're not followed as regularly, and uh, the, uh, the last one, the, if you don't change your habits uh, rapidly. So most people know you have taken 20, 30, 40 years to have those habits. So to give you time, when you have all those factors that nutritionists will, will say, over that nine month period, there's a weight increase. There's a weight increase over nine months when, when you go with, with those. Those are predictive factors. Some may succeed, but the, the same thing, the, 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 dramatic, the dramatic change between the, the, those two approaches are, but the, the best thing is choose the diet that you want. So, and change if uh, it doesn't work. So diets, it's a personal choice and maybe change any time. The next part of it is uh, how to maintain, how to maintain for life. No diet will make it. I told you, no, no diet will make it. Uh, it's you. It's your behavior. It's your daily choice. Do you know when I say, will I keep it for life? The secret. Keep it for one day at a time. Only way. Because future doesn't exist. Future doesn't exist. One day at a time. So if you can make it today, tomorrow doesn't exist. Tomorrow will be the instant moment here and there tomorrow, not today. Uh, past doesn't exist anymore. Say so it's today. So just see it because if you say, well, in one year, three years, five, 15 years, there's one person I was uh, delivering a conference in France and uh, one person in the audience just say, hey, Dr. LaRocque, yeah, will I maintain my weight for 15 years? <laughs> I don't know and I don't mind, but you should do mine today. Can I maintain it today? And I think, yes, you can do it. But choose yourself. Choose yourself. Every morning, looking at yourself in the mirror. Hi, how do you do? Well, you may say, yuppie. I'm happy to be here today, to be alive, and try to do my best today to be a better person if I can make it today. So that is very important. And for weight maintenance, uh, in the international, at the International Congress on Obesity, uh, which was held in France, um, we showed that even after four years, the, the weight loss success of the weight maintained is over 80%. It goes to 83, 84 percent of the weight loss still maintained four years later. If you don't have that follow-up, 
But the secret of it is it has a regular monthly follow-up, maybe with the mental weight questionnaire. So do make sure to focus on, on where I stand th today or this month. And so it, the success rate is very high. Otherwise, and that study showed it too, after four years, the success rate, because it was still a success rate, was only 6% of the weight loss maintained. So I prefer to have 84% of the success rate. But the secret, be followed after. Don't quit because we are a new person every day. So and nothing. We're not built in cement. Uh, we every day we are a new person and have new emotions and new frustration and, and new joy and so forth. So uh, just go one day at a time and be followed. Just once a month, maybe a few minutes, uh, but it may be enough to have a very long-term success. So uh, that, that's uh, that's great. So, yeah, and so do we have, uh, there's a, oh, how are you, George? Hopefully you are doing good. You are doing good. What advice would you give a client who struggles with the guilt of slipping off their plan? Yeah, we, we spoke of it. So sometimes the first time I, I meet a client, all the time I, I tell them, let's see, yeah, we, we have chosen that diet, we have it, explained it to you and so forth. But I know that probably one day you will want to stop because you're going to have gained uh, one pound, two pounds, three pounds, uh, a stone, uh, one stone. So whatever you gain, please, we're going to make a moral agreement between us. Come and tell me that, that you have, that you want to quit because it doesn't work anymore you gain uh, a stone uh, and so so do you commit to come and tell me and, and then i say you know what what i was going to tell you congratulations to be here congratulations oh yeah i feel miserable about my congratulations to be a better i know it was tough because your pride and, and the guilt because he, uh, i should have been better i should have been able not to regain that one well you're just human so we have a marvelous opportunity in order to understand what's going on and maybe improve next time. So I will ask them what happened, since when, and, and then we can say maybe there was some stress uh, uh, emotions related to it, uh, uh, or just a lack of motivation. Uh, th th that's another interesting thing because motivation, which I've seen very, very often, when that client, that patient of mine just came the first time, the motivation factors is one thing, is suffering. They, they, they hurt uh, from psychological or physical uh, aspect of it. So they don't feel good. There's a lot of physical or psychological suffering. After maybe uh, one stone or two stone uh, of weight loss, they don't hurt as much. So they have reached their unconscious goal, uh, which is not to suffer as much. Uh, so that's the, the dangerous place because sometimes if I don't suffer, suffering uh, was my trigger for my motivation. So they go and stop. Well, I will please myself today and maybe in two days again, and then let me restart slowly, but regain some weight loss. So just a matter of motivation. And when you, and that's why when we do repeat a mental weight questionnaire. We stay focused. We understand. Oh, my motivation uh, is low. Is being lowered. Uh, I've got negative factors. Uh, I resent the fact of uh, having to still follow a diet. Uh, I regret losing the food I like when I'm on the diet. It's too much effort, uh, and I can handle it. Or or, or and can I do it with doubts? I mean, uh, if I do this, and you see, I regain weight. So all of those negative thoughts, they are thoughts. They're only perceptions. They don't exist really. It's thoughts. Well, the good news is we can change our own realistic thoughts, and that's the goal of the, the motivation program. So great. The uh, I H thing. What is your advice with clients who have uh, motivational blocks? So uh, read my books. <laughs> the uh, yeah, that that that's a category a category of people who have blocks. So uh, meaning that they try to lose weight, they have good intention and so forth, but um, something inside their mind that will prevent them from succeeding. It may be fear of success. It may be uh, guilt. 
uh, I don't deserve uh, to be uh, healthier, to be nicer looking and, and so forth. So uh, there are all kind of blocks and you're going to find it uh, in the, the first book that I've written, uh, Be Thin Through Motivation. Uh, this was written in 1982, I think, so uh, it's already uh, almost 40 years now. Uh, so there are reasons. It's very interesting to um, to, to understand this. And uh, in the uh, new book also, Redefining Weight Management, uh, I, I also uh, talk a lot about those uh, motivational blocks, where they do come from. And uh, so uh, uh, many of my books are in English, some are in French, the new ones are not yet in English. Hopefully we're going to be able to uh, bring them to you uh, in English, but there's something to be done. So but you may need more help psychologically, or maybe your counselor can do uh, enough, or if not, you can consult the psychologist or something, but it's worthwhile because those motivational psychological blocks uh, are major. But in the uh, my last book, I, I just uh, remember now, uh, my last book, uh, which is in English, a, uh, uh, the Why book, I recommend to you. It's a kind of, usually I use to talk, to talk about my Bible. So everything is in there, medically, uh, psychologically, emotionally. Uh, so exercise, things, so everything is in there. You're going to have those answers. Uh, so the um, there's something to be done. The, 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 my own my message is that there's hope. So yes, you're going to feel much better uh, if you achieve this. So sometimes we don't like it because there's we feel that it, it, those uh, uh, come from pain we had very young sometimes uh, and tough to bear. Uh, so we have uh, denied it and, and so forth. So uh, yes, uh, when we understand it and work uh, with the good tools, uh, you, you feel a bullet coming off your shoulder. Uh, so, uh, and start feeling much better. Life, I think, is, is short and it's worthwhile having a, an interesting life physically and psychologically. Great. So, hopefully, it answers your. Uh... So, Patrick, so do you think that acceptance is one of the hardest skills to acquire? In other words, uh, this is me and the commitment to change in, in such a struggle. Um, do you think that acceptance, I'm not sure what you mean exactly. Um, if you talk about accepting uh, the fact that, for example, overweight, uh, that may be a chronic smoker or alcoholic or, or whatever, uh, um, well, maybe that's the first step. You, you may be right there. So we have to accept our condition. We have to accept that we're human beings. We have to accept that we're not perfect. And if you are perfect, I won't believe you. I won't say that you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Okay, I'm just holding it around, but uh, nobody is perfect. Uh, so to accept ourselves and love ourselves, sometimes I tell my patients, uh, you have kids, uh, you have parents, do you love them? Oh, yes, I love my kids, I love my mother, I love them. Okay, uh, are they overweight? Do, uh, do they smoke? Do they have alcohol problem? Do they have, oh, some are overweight, some have other problems. Do you still love them? Oh, yeah, and what do you, say to your son who would be overweight and so forth, oh, I love you so much, do something about it, go and see, uh, search for help uh, to help you change uh, uh, that situation. So the more you love the person, the more you're committed to help that person to improve. So be your best friend, not your worst enemy. So accept yourself without guilt. I, I paid a price, so then that's responsibility. I did things maybe that was not uh, reliable with my health and, and so forth. So accept this and love yourself as being a non-perfect person, and but you're on your personal journey to be a better person every day. So to have that burning desire to improve, that's great. So if you have that quality, that burning desire, any of you who's listening, to, if you have that burning desire, you can achieve slowly, gradually, not in a straight line. You, you're gonna have obstacles. Sometimes you may fail for a short period of time, but 
you're on your way to success. You're on your way to a successful life with self-appreciation, self-worth. So, uh, yeah, to accept ourselves is uh, very, very important. Uh, great, Patrick. Thank you. Hi, Paul. Uh, what do you say are the main discoveries you have had over 30 years of research? Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, that's a, I would say probably, well, I published many research, weight maintenance, diet choice. Uh, I, I talk about that uh, uh, on motivation. It was published in eating behaviors and so forth. But the best one is probably the last one that I did with uh, McGill University. So we were eight researchers um, and we had a protocol uh, and I was asked to join the the team of researchers of McGill University in Montreal. And the overall idea they had, uh, and I was the only one having a different view, uh, we do think that, for example, uh, weight loss and weight maintenance is related to hormones. Uh, so in the past years, uh, uh, different hormones, the ghrelin, leptin, uh, we talk a lot about insulin, glucagon, uh, cortisol. So that hormones were playing a major role uh, responsible for the weight evolution, gaining the weight or losing the weight. So, uh, and also we have chosen the uh, group of persons. Uh, they, uh, they had to go through the mental weight questionnaire. Uh, they had to fill up also other kind of questionnaire. They, they went to the hospital. Uh, they had their blood taking and we were measuring all those hormones, I think there was almost 20 different items that we, we measured. And we put those people in the MRI machine. And in that MRI machine, uh, so the, uh, well, we registered what was going on in their head. And uh, we were showing them at different moments, uh, for example, uh, food pictures uh, and seeing different kinds, seeing how in their brain, in their how it, it was functioning. We did that before starting a diet program. We, we did that uh, a month later, and we did that uh, three months later. And the overall results, in which I was very happy with, it's all between our ears. Um, so we've seen that what was going on, it was not the weight loss uh, or the weight gain was not related uh, to uh, to the hormones. We couldn't find any correlation with hormones and the weight evolution, but we could see a relation between what goes on on the neurocognitive centers in the brain. So these neurocognitive centers it means this is where your thoughts go. So this is where so it means that it's really between the the, the ears and the thoughts, your thoughts. The, these patients' thoughts that we could relate to the weight evolution. So, uh, well, it, it confirmed. So, in my first book, I think I said, uh, Be Thin from Motivation, which was the first time it appeared in 1982. Uh, and I've been, for those 40 years or so, uh, going around the world to, uh, to talk about this. But this was finally really scientifically proven and published in Cell Metabolism, a major scientific uh, review uh, in this last January uh, 2019. So, uh, and this brings a lot of hope. So if it's our thoughts, yes, we can identify those unrealistic thoughts and maybe change them for more realistic one. So maybe what we, we tried to do uh, today with some of your questions. So uh, that's great. So that, that that's very, very uh, interesting. Thanks, Paul. Uh, John White. Hi, Dr. LeBrock. Uh, is it normal for motivation levels to dip after about six weeks? Uh, I think we, uh, yes, uh, it's between four and six weeks. You're right, absolutely. And just like I, I explained earlier, because um, unconsciously people who want to lose the weight do it because they suffer a lot. They feel bad. They, they don't want to feel as bad that they have enough. So they're ready to de to be even uh, to have surgery even then and pay a big amount of money. They, 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 they can't stand anymore. But when you start feeling better, and usually it's after four, six weeks, uh, something's like a stone or two weight loss, uh, they, uh, then they, um, 
they they have achieved their unconscious goal and so this is why you have to be uh, to understand this and say okay now what's my real goal okay I don't have any as much suffering but it's, you may have still 20 40 pounds to lose uh, because we have lost let's say uh, one stone or two stones we feel much better we feel lighter like we were flying the sky but again when you're going to lose that, that other stone or two uh you you have more benefits because you you will become aware of it so we have really to to change from a motivation based on suffering to a motivation based on self uh, achievement so uh it, it becomes more kind of a psychological or spiritual way uh, of doing it so uh, write down the new goals and write down the benefits you expect from it so uh so do you think uh the mental weight questionnaire could be updated as it get boring or, or predict uh, predictable after a while uh patrick no if <laughs> uh, if you answer the mental weight question, it's been going now for almost forty years. Uh, we've got over half a million, five hundred thousand uh, people have done tests uh, in the world in different countries uh, since then, uh, and uh, the uh, we looked at how people answer it and repetition of it and so forth um, it will take it when you repeat it probably it would take some 10 minutes the uh, the idea is just because if we change the question and so forth we won't be able to compare it so yes it's easy to change some questions and so forth but we won't be able then the last time you were uh, that much uh, mental weight score and this month you are 10 more or 10 less uh, mental weight score. So that that's we we, we need to make, to compare the same thing. So and but I have people who have done it for 20 years now, uh, even more. And uh, if every time you compare it with maybe the first one you did at the beginning uh, or the last one, uh, and it's very sensitive but when they uh, I'm impressed myself again to, because uh, I do see those patients and those mental health reports uh, every week every day I'm, I'm consulting uh, and the uh, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed by the sensitivity uh, of the so, so if you compare for example my motivation the negative factors of motivation whoop well, this month they may be uh, more important so that's good the scale goes down, so more important. Okay, what's going on? What do I think? Uh, my uh, my morale, my depression, so my stress level it can change very, very much uh, from one month to the other. And sometimes we say from one day to the other. Uh, it's, I remember uh, lecturing with a group of physicians in France uh, for a complete weekend. They would get in uh, Friday night, we would start uh, uh, working together, and, and then they would leave uh, Sunday night. And uh, then I would do the make them do the mental weight questionnaire for, uh, first thing uh, Friday night, and uh, so I had a couple of physicians who were uh, having suicidal thoughts, uh, very depressive, and so forth. Uh, and who followed our programming, uh, our program for the, those two days and a half, and, and we had we repeated it uh, after two days and a half. And those guys with the uh, suicidal thoughts, well, with the depression, they were uh, much better and so forth. So we can change our thoughts very rapidly. Uh, sometimes almost a uh, few seconds about realizing that those thoughts were unrealistic. Uh, and I, w I don't want those thoughts. I want to change them for more realistic thoughts. Uh, so we can change dramatic and rapid change. So just see it as a tool to help you uh, and see where you stand right now uh, and try to answer as honestly as you can because sometimes at the beginning the people will uh, uh, negate they, they will try to avoid to answer they, they, they don't want to touch to the deep down uh, hurt that they feel suffering that they feel uh, so uh, it, 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 go with how you really feel and it's a uh, 
honestly, I, I tell people when, when I lecture to physicians or uh, I wouldn't treat a, a person who have a weight problem without it see, because it's, it's treating something without knowing the real cause. So, uh, and it's very sensitive again when you repeat it. So I encourage you to keep up going, even if you feel that it's a bit boring. Uh, it's, it's not predictable uh, uh, as you think, if you feel, but just keep an open mind and see how you feel. Great, thank you, Patrick. Uh, so, well, we're already at an end. So, uh, John, thank you. It's been perfect to share with you. So feel free to send us your comments. So it helps us to, uh, it helps me also to, uh, to be able to help you maybe a little bit more. Uh, and enjoy your time and uh, we'll see uh, hopefully pretty soon. Ciao. Have a great night.